So when you think about troubleshooting networks, you need to think about troubleshooting areas. And you can start to troubleshoot in one area and then move to the next. So the main network area types are the LAN and the WAN. And each of these types will have different network and security components that need to be troubleshooted. So the LAN will run an IGP with layer two switches and layer three routers. So keep in mind that layer two switches make decisions based on the destination MAC address. And at this stage, we're looking at ethernet frames and these frames don't have a TTL field like an IP header does. So you really do need to be careful of layer two loops. So at this stage, make sure that you use spanning tree protocol. I would also make sure that any unused ports on the layer two switch are in shutdown mode if they're not being used. So for the layer three router side of things, you wanna be careful with route redistribution between different routing protocols. So this is fine if you have one point of redistribution in the network, but if you have two or more points of redistribution, you need to understand the implications of route leaking. Then on the WAN side of things, well, I'm gonna guess that assuming most of this is out of your control. So it would be best if you had a, a monitoring solution that could look deep into the underlay and overlays and give you the correct feedback. And hopefully all of this can be put into one dashboard too. So networking is all about moving information from your application across and within your network. And generally speaking, the essence of networking exists as a source and a destination where we want to communicate. The source can be an application that you're using on your computer. And then the destination can be somewhere else, for example, in the cloud and on another network. So networking needs to have a source and destination. And between the source and destination, we're going to have a variety of networking and security components that make all of this work. And these are the types of devices that you need to troubleshoot. So for this, you need to understand the rules of the game. Our networks today are based on the TCP IP suite of protocols. So you need to have a good understanding of TCP, UDP, IP and ARP. And a great place to get the grips of how all of these work together is by looking at the OSI model. Now keep in mind that OSI is not implemented today. The TCP IP suite is implemented. But the OSI is a great place to start learning and understanding networking. And this is a first step to troubleshooting different network problems, such as high packet loss and latency. So in the early days of networking, we had a single manufacturer that provided everything for a network solution. So this would have included all the hardware and all the software in one complete package. Now, nowadays, we have many different manufacturers of networking components that are used to build your hardware and software. So we need to have standards and models of how these networking components are used to interact with each other. So in the early 1980s, the ISO defined a standard for manufacturers of networking components that would enable these networking components to communicate in different environments. Now this was known as a seven layer of the OSI reference model. So the following are the seven layers of the OSI network model. We have layer seven, which is the application, which goes all the way down to layer one, which is the physical layer. Now in between, we have layer six, which is a presentation. We have layer five, which is a session. Layer four, which is a transport. Layer three, which is a network. And then we have layer two, which is data link layer. So you need to have a good idea of how information travels between the layers. So network communication starts at the application layer of the OSI model, which will be the sending system, which in our case is host A. And then it works down through the layers to the physical layer, where it can be put on the physical medium, such as a copper cable. So the information then passes the communication medium, which is the physical cabling or wireless, until it receives the far end system, which operates back up the layers, starting at the physical layer until it reaches the application layer. So you may be wondering, what can I use the OSI model for? I mean, it was developed back in the 1980s. Well, understanding the OSI enables you to determine quickly at what layer a problem can occur. So understanding the functions of each OSI reference model layer is very important for troubleshooting network components and network communication. So once you understand these functions and the troubleshooting tools available to you at the various layers of the model, Troubleshooting network related problems will be much easier. So in the beginning, I often start an application layer and work down, or I can even start at the physical layer and work up. 
So we have different tools such as N map scanning tool that can be used to map out your network and look for any issues for you. So N map is used for network discovery and also security audits. Now this tool generally works at the TCP and UDP, which is a transport layer of the OSI model. So for network engineers, out of the seven layers of the OSI reference model, you should really be very comfortable with the bottom four layers because most of the network components function at these layers. I mean, we do have network security devices that function up at the higher application layer, such as application best firewalls. But if I was to start learning, I would focus on the bottom four. So once you get comfortable with all of the layers, you can perform what's known as divide and conquer approach to troubleshooting. So when there's an issue, instead of starting at the top layer, such as the application and working down, or even starting at the bottom layer, which is the physical layer and working up, you can go straight to the layer that you feel directly has that problem. You should also note that data has a special term assigned once it reaches a different layer. So at layer four, you've probably know that the data is called a segment. Layer three, the data is called a packet. Then at layer two, the data is called a frame. So before we wrap up, I just want to have a quick look at Internet Control Message Protocol. Now, this is a really useful protocol for troubleshooting. So ICMP enables TCP IP network systems to share status and error information. So you can use status information to detect and troubleshoot network problems and two programs that use ICMP messages are ping and trace ERT. So you can use ping to send ICMP echo requests to an IP address and then wait for an ICMP echo response. So ping reports a time interval between the sending and request and receiving the response. So with ping, you can determine whether your network IP system is functioning correctly. You can also use trace through and this can be used to trace the IP packets path across one or many networks. So it was initially developed for Unix based platforms, but now is included in most operating systems. And in Windows implementation, this is known as Trace ERT. So just keep in mind that ICMP does not use port numbers, but instead uses ICMP types and codes to identify the different types of messages that can help you troubleshoot. For example, an echo request message used by ping request uses ICMP type 8 while the ping reply comes back with an ICMP type zero message. Just before we wrap up, I just want to go through some of the most common network troubleshooting tools. Well, we have ping and trace route that we've just spoken about. We also have IP config. Now IP config stands for internet protocol configuration. And this is a command line application tool, which displays the current TCP IP configuration that you have and also any DHCP and DNS information that may be useful for your troubleshooting. I also use NSLOOKUP quite a bit. Now this is also a command line tool for querying the DNS system to obtain the mapping between domain names, IP addresses and other DNS records. Whois is also very useful. Now this is a query and response protocol that is used for querying the database that stores the registered users or assignees of internet records such as a domain name, an IP address block or even an autonomous system used by BGP. We also have NetStat now. This is a, a network statistics tool that's used for troubleshooting and configuration that can also serve as a monitoring tool for connections that you may have over the network. So both incoming and outgoing connections, routing tables, ports that are listening and uses statistics are all common for this command. Finally, if you get into trouble, you can always use a sub that an IP calculator to make sure that your hosts are on the correct network. So the IP subnet calculator performs subnet calculations for a given network address block, subnet mask. It will also show you the maximum required host per subnet and determines the resulting broadcast address and subnets for you.